The Lost Weekend, a film from 1945, tells the story of a writer's struggle with alcoholism. It's a powerful drama that shows the hard reality of addiction. What makes this movie stand out are the real-life stories that inspired it. For example, the director, Billy Wilder, hired an actual recovering alcoholic to ensure the film's accuracy. This movie is still relevant today because it shows the human side of a problem that many people face. It's not just a story, it's a reflection of real struggles. Now, I'm curious to know about your connection to The Lost Weekend. Do you have a memory or a personal experience related to this film? Your stories and memories are important, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching as we have many more surprising and touching facts to share about this unforgettable movie. The Lost Weekend, a film from 1945, tells the story of a man named Don Burnham and his struggle with drinking. This movie was one of the first to show alcoholism in a serious light. Set in New York City after World War II, it was a time when people were trying to find normalcy again. The film's honest look at addiction made people think and talk about the issue more openly. It won several awards and is still remembered today for its powerful message and strong acting. The Lost Weekend helped change how movies told stories about real-life problems. This classic film holds a place on the American Film Institute's list of the top 400 movies nominated for their Greatest American Movies collection. Howard Da Silva, who was part of the original group theater ensemble, plays a significant role in the film. Recognizing its importance, the United States National Film Registry has preserved the film for its cultural, historical, and aesthetic significance. Before his acting career took a defining turn, Ray Mullane was known for his sharpshooting skills, securing victories in top-tier English shooting contests like the Risley Match and likely the Army Operational Shooting Competition at Bisley Camp. His path to stardom was unconventional. Mullane stepped into the lead role of a groundbreaking film only after the studio's preferred choices, including Cary Grant, declined the part. This performance earned him an Academy Award, affirming the studio's decision. Meanwhile, Philip Terry's personal life intertwined with Hollywood royalty when he married Joan Crawford. Their swift nuptials led to Terry becoming a stepfather and later adopting a son. However, their union dissolved shortly after the war, leading to a unique custody arrangement focused on the child's future education. In the early 1980s, the television series MASH aired an episode that depicted delirium tremens with a level of intensity similar to that of the classic film. This film, part of a large catalog of Paramount Productions from the Golden Age of Hollywood, found a new home with MC Universal for television audiences. Despite initial hesitation and a lukewarm reception from early viewers, the studio released it, leading to its critical acclaim and recognition at the Academy Awards. Its legacy continued with a DVD release in early 2001 and has since been a staple on Turner Classic Movies, showcasing its enduring appeal. Paramount's initial doubts about the film's mature subject matter were dispelled by its eventual success and the accolades it garnered. In a classic tale of struggle, Frank Phelan delivered a memorable performance as a supportive figure years before becoming a household name on television. The lead role, which became iconic in cinema history, could have looked very different with Cary Grant and Jose Ferrer once considered for the part. The film's influence extended into music, with Warren Zevon's Carmelita alluding to a pivotal scene, although his song shifted the focus from alcohol to another addiction, reflecting the broad impact of the film's themes. In a notable screen debut, Earl Hyman began a career that would span over five decades. His first appearance marked the start of a long and successful journey in acting. Meanwhile, Ray Mullane's acceptance of the Best Actor Oscar was memorably succinct, expressing gratitude with a brief thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I'm greatly honored. This moment is preserved and can be viewed online. The setting of the film is a topic of interest due to its historical backdrop. Despite being released shortly after World War II, the narrative unfolds in the late 1930s as evidenced by a character's reference to an event three years prior and a dated Opera House poster pinpointing the story to around 1937 or 1938. This temporal placement deliberately omits any mention of the war, setting the film apart from its contemporaries. In his dedication to authenticity, Ray Mullane, who was not accustomed to heavy drinking, attempted to experience inebriation firsthand for his role. 
Despite his efforts, these trials often resulted in him being ill. Director Billy Wilder, known for his sharp wit, humorously suggested that Millane's portrayal could earn him the nickname The Kidney, a playful contrast to Lauren Buck Hall's The Look from her previous film. Throughout the film, the character Don Burnham's alcohol intake is depicted with startling detail, tallying up to 15 shots at Nat's Bar, additional drinks at Harry and Joe's, and nearly three quarts of rye, painting a stark picture of his struggle with addiction. At a young age, Sarah Jane, known professionally as Jane Wyman, began her career in the entertainment industry as a dancer. Her first significant job was with MGM, where she danced alongside future stars like Lucille Ball and Betty Grable. This early experience paved the way for her successful acting career. Meanwhile, Ray Mullane, faced with a challenging role in a groundbreaking film, harbored reservations about his and director Billy Wilder's ability to deliver a convincing performance. Despite these doubts, their collaboration would prove to be successful. Later, after nearly two decades with Warner Brothers, Jane Wyman decided to part ways with the studio. She shifted her focus to television, where she produced and starred in her own show, marking a new chapter in her career. Despite facing significant pressure from both the alcohol industry and temperance groups, the film found its way to audiences through a limited release, largely due to the insistence of director Billy Wilder. The critical acclaim it received upon this restricted showing convinced Paramount Pictures to distribute it more broadly. In a separate note, Jane Wyman, known for her acting prowess, stepped in for Gracie Allen on the Burns, an Allen radio show, marking a rare occasion as Allen had never missed a performance before. Wyman's talent was further recognized when she joined the ranks of a select group of actresses who have won an Academy Award for portraying a character in labor, a feat she achieved with her role in Johnny Belinda. In the world of pawnbroking, the three Golden Globes are a recognized emblem with roots tracing back to the influential Medici family. For his role as a chronic alcoholic, actor Ray Millane adopted a stringent diet, resulting in a significantly leaner appearance that lent authenticity to his character's struggles. Interestingly, the film's title was revealed to be a typographical error discovered years later by director Billy Wilder. The original novel by Charles R. Jackson was intended to be named The Last Weekend, not The Lost Weekend. In a twist of fate, Jean Arthur declined the role of Helen St. James, leading to a different casting direction. Years later, Jane Wyman, while working on a television episode, met Fernando Lamas, the father of Lorenzo Lamas, who was then just an infant. This encounter would come full circle when Lorenzo, at the age of 21, successfully auditioned for and secured a role in the television series Falcon Crest, acting alongside Wyman as her grandson. During filming in New York City, an unexpected moment occurred when a fan's eagerness for Ray Millane's autograph disrupted a carefully planned location shot. 